Hello everyone, this is David, mobile developer. In this video I'm going to teach you in an extremely simple and short way how to apply state management in a Flutter app with a provider package. The resulting application is going to be a counter app in which we can increase the counter if we press the button located at the bottom of the screen. Does this example sound familiar to you? Yes, what we are going to do is refactor the app template that Flutter creates when you create a project, leaving the functionality and the visual part intact, but refactoring its state management with provider. Before we start, I'm going to show you the change we're going to make. This is the default state management that Flutter gives you when you create a project. Here we see a widget that is responsible for the visual part and the state management. This management is done through variables in the body of the class. When we want to change the state, we use the setState method. The change that we're going to apply consists of refactoring this state management so that it looks like this. On the left side, we have a model class that will contain the variables that will constitute the state of our widget. This widget will subscribe to this model to receive state changes. And when those changes are made, the model will emit the updated values to the widget. By doing so, we are creating a circular reactive architecture. A great advantage of this model is that we have a clear separation between the state logic and the display of views, thus achieving a much cleaner code that is easier to organize and easier to maintain. In addition, with this methodology, we could also achieve the following. In this diagram, you can see how not just one, but multiple widgets can subscribe to the model class for all of them to receive state changes. A practical example of this will be, for example, a class that manages user authentication against a server. You could have a single class that contains methods like login, register, get user, and then several widgets that consume these changes and that are automatically modified when a state change occurs due to user authentication. To start, create an application to work on. I'm going to do this through the terminal, but you can also do it through your IDE. Open the created app in your trusted IDE. Open the pubspec.yaml file and remove all of the comments. Then, add the provider dependency and trigger a pub get to download the package. You could do this process quicker by typing flutter pub add provider in the terminal. Now, if we go to the main.dart file, we will see that the state is being managed with a counter variable. We are going to create a new class in a file called mainmodel.dart that extends change notifier. By extending this class, it will allow other classes to subscribe to it and receive state changes when calling the notifyListeners method. Let's move the counter variable into this class and add a getter and a setter to it as follows. Here you can see that we still have a private variable counter initialized with the value 0. Through its getter, marked with the keyword get, the widgets can obtain this value at any time. Through its setter, marked with the keyword set, the widgets can update their value. And when this happens, first we check that the new value is different from the previous one. If it is, we update the private variable that stores the real value and invoke the notify listeners method so that all widgets that have subscribed to this class are notified, so their view can be re-rendered with the new value. We are now going to apply changes to the main.dart file, so that we can use the model we just created. First of all, remove all comments and also the increment counter method in this class. At this point, the IDE will highlight two errors. This is because we have removed the counter variable and the increment counter method. In order to be able to use the model class that we have just created, we need first a widget that provides it to the entire widget tree that hangs from it. And that widget is called changeNotifierProvider, 
which is included in the provider package. This component allows us to create a class that extends change notifier and expose it so that any widget under it can obtain it. Also, in order to react to changes, we're going to need a widget that can read those changes and react. This widget is called consumer. The combination of both components look like this. Now make the builder return the scaffold like so. This model variable is the instance of the model we just created. Use it to obtain the current value of the counter and also to increment it when the floating action button is pressed. Note that in this case we don't need the set state method to modify the state. When we modify the counter value, the model class will take care of propagating this change. The consumer will receive this change and will redraw our UI. Let's launch this app to see if it works. In this small example, we have implemented state management with provider in the simplest and most basic way possible. The provider package offers many more possibilities and resources to do more advanced things, but we can leave that for another day. Please tell me in the comments if you would like me to do more tutorials explaining more in-depth state management with provider and other possible applications. If you have found this video useful, please leave a thumbs up. Also, consider subscribing for more content related to Flutter and mobile development in general. You can find the final app of this tutorial in the video description. Thank you for watching and happy coding!